right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome, Antelo. Today is Thursday, which means that it is Vlog Day. And yes, yes, I got a great, I got a great, long, super long, really the longest, longest vlog you're ever going to watch. It's actually hopefully not going to be that long, but I do have a lot of stuff to, uh, I do have a lot of stuff to talk about. We're going to cover some advocacy. I don't have anything specific. Okay, that's kind of a lie. I have one thing that is slightly specific to advocacy. I'm going to do a couple uh, quick touches on a different couple different subjects. I just have like this weird hodgepodge of subjects that all kind of ended up in my vlog notes and I'm going to kind of pick and choose which one I want to do. Of course, we're going to have some shout outs later. Of course, we're going to have some beer later. Of course, we're going to have some first impressions later, which is going to be great. I do have a retro vaping segment ready to go, but I'm not quite sure if it's going to happen because it involves building. So generally, I like to prep the vlog before I sit down and shoot it, meaning I have all my first impressions ready to go. I've got my beer ready to go. I've got my everything that I'm vaping, just all boom, ready to go. And that includes things for that never got re or reviews for things that never got reviews. That includes comments of the week. That includes my retro vaping. So right now, I don't have my retro vaping set up. So we might skip retro vaping this week. We'll do it next week. But I definitely, definitely have a review for things that never got reviewed. That'll be towards the end of the program. So welcome. Welcome once again. Um, so first things first, that German petition uh, that I was mispronouncing and then kind of pronouncing and then not mispronouncing again for the Bundes Bundes tug. Uh, they it went it went through. So the petition goal was reached, uh, which is fantastic. I like to think maybe I had a little bit uh, of a part in that, but honestly, the fact that it's just done uh, is awesome. Evidently, in Germany, they take their petitions much more seriously than we do here in the United States. In the United States, I feel like these petitions are just lip service, like, oh, wow, you got, uh, you know, 100,000 people to sign a petition, congratulations, we'll look at it and get back to you, and they never, ever get back to you, and when they do, it's a canned freaking response that says, thank you for reaching out to the U.S. government, I appreciate all of my voters signed Obama, but in Germany, evidently, it's like an actual, real, serious thing, like they have to reach it, they have to, you know, uh, speak to it. Not again, not quite sure how it works, but that's what I've been told from a few of my German subscribers that it is a very, very serious thing. It's much more uh, crucial of a document than we have here in the United States. So that was awesome. The German petition goal was reached. Awesome. I also don't have any updates yet on those ceramic coils. I've got a bunch of literature from Vapresso, including some printed ones. They sent me, uh, you know, over some sort of information about what the device does, what the C-cell replacement coils are made out of. Um, no dry hit, self-cleaning. It's a self-cleaning coil. Delivering original aroma of e-juice, clean, pure, consistent flavor, has much longer life cycle, unique structures, this, that, and the other. They sent me over some, some stuff to read as well as some stuff via electronically. And believe me, I'm not here to be like, ooh, Vapresso, you're a bad company and you're bad for releasing bad products and this, that, and the other. I just want the truth. And when you talk about tobacco harm reduction, trying to reduce your harm of things that you inhale, yeah, I feel like uh, that they should be mostly safe or safer, if that makes any sense. I have not heard back from the vendor that's doing the testing, he assured me that it's currently going through. Evidently, it's a it's a much longer process as the process than say testing an e-liquid here or there. Uh, it's much more involved, this, that, and the other. But uh, he gave me his word. He said, "I assure you, I will get you all the information you need, all the test results when they become available to me." Unfortunately, it's still in the testing phase right now, and they're just the information simply isn't there. It's not available. So, so that's that. that that's the update on the uh, Vapresso ceramic coils. Believe me when I say, as soon as I know, you will know. I'm not going to hide it from anybody, and I'm not going to put it in weird places on the internet like, 
just on my Facebook or in some Facebook group. I will put it in a vlog. I will put it in the title of the vlog. So you don't have to, uh, you know, wonder if there's been any updates. Trust me, you will know when there's an update. I'll put it all out there full force on all of my social medias, including the vlog. You will get updated with that uh, with that information. So, cat, so okay, so in my best of 2015 video, I, uh, I talked about... Uh, Getting, uh, I talked about the velocity and how everyone went velocity crazy and how I had never even tried one, so that's cool. I, and I talked to a guy, and I'm not going to call him out or whatever. Um, I may have got scammed, which is a bummer, but, you know, what are you going to do? You trust people on the internet, right? Uh, he said, I have two authentic velocities. I loved them so much. I bought two of them. Um, I want to send you one so you can use it and try it out and this, that, and the other. And I was like, wow, that would be, I mean, that would be unbelievable. I, you know, how can I thank you? And he's like, well, I've always wanted to try some juices. So I was like, done. So I sent him some Epiclouds uh, juice bottles and then never heard back from him. He's just gone, uh, just disappeared. So I don't know if that was like a his scam was to be like, oh, I'm going to tell Grim Green I have two velocities and then I'll send him one, but only if he sends me some juice and then I'm going to take the juice and then I'm not going to send him the velocity. I don't, that seems like a, a pretty extravagant, you know, long term scam if you're going to do it. But at the end of the day, I still haven't heard back from this guy. It's been months or well, it's been about a month and I sent him juice and I didn't get a velocity back. And then Kevin, Kevin from VP Live. Look, Kevin, if you're if you're watching this, if you have the time to sit through an hour and 20 minutes of vlog, have me on the show anytime. Just shoot me an email. I'm always more than happy to come on the show. We can sit and talk trademark, uh, copyright infringement all day, every day. But he brought something up recently in an older episode, and I didn't know that this was being discussed or talked about or anything on the show. I generally... Don't, I, I try to listen to as many podcasts as I can, and because I subscribe to so many people on YouTube and I subscribe to so many podcasts, sometimes certain episodes of certain things get skipped. Like, I love 500 by Midnight, the podcast about Las Vegas, but I don't get the opportunity to listen to every single show. Same thing goes for VP Live. I like Kevin's content. I tolerate Russ's content. I don't really listen to the other content on his network, but I've always I've always been a fan of Kevin, and I I just I, I find his shows entertaining, and I find his personality entertaining to listen to. So, I was today sitting trying to get caught up on some emails because I was gone uh, on business uh, for the last weekend. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna throw on an episode of VP Live. I'm just gonna listen to it uh, on the SoundCloud while I answer emails. Cool, 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 cool. I'm listening to it and Kevin comes on and Dino comes on and they're going on about this, that, and the other. And then they talked about a post I made on GrimGreen.com about copyright infringement and how I'm a terrible person because I'm a hypocrite. And then they went on after that to play a clip from my top five favorite everything of 2015, wherein that video I said, oh, I didn't get a velocity. You can blame Cisco and Dino for that. Now, I was operating under the impression that I was on good terms with Cisco and Dino and that we were more or less friends and that I could joke around with them in that context. Evidently, that's not the case. Uh, Kevin said that I uh, am like literally blaming them for not getting a velocity and I have no expectations. I didn't feel entitled to a velocity atomizer and if Dino and Cisco took it that way then I apologize but again I was operating under the impression that we were friendly enough to be able to joke around like that. Evidently that's not the case so I apologize. Cisco sounded pretty upset which you know, uh, again, I'm sorry, that's not the way I intended it. It was meant to be joking. Why the fuck on earth would I blame Cisco and Dino for me not having a velocity? That doesn't make any sense. It's obviously, obviously a rib. It's obviously, obviously joking. But, you know, you can't control the way that people take the things that you say. So like I said in the 2015, best of 2015 video, I was close 
to buying a Velocity. Uh, I didn't have the cash on me at the time. And when I did save up the money to get a Velocity, it got to be a little bit too later on and I just didn't buy one because I didn't think it would be relevant anymore for me to be talking about a Velocity RDA. So I spent my $80 elsewhere. So sorry, I don't know what all the confusion was about, um, but there you go. Go, Kevin, is that a good enough explanation? Dino, I don't know. Cisco, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's not, and maybe now we're just going to be enemies for the rest of our lives because of a misunderstanding and because of a joke. But moving forward from there, I did a review last week for the NE box or the knee box. People call it the knee box. I call it the any box. I don't know why, because any box just sounds funnier to me. And I was going on and on about. Oh, my any box was leaking and it leaks and it still leaks and it's over there and it's, I know it's just leaking like crazy. And people are like, oh, well, if you lay it on its side, it doesn't leak. False. Mine only started leaking when I laid it on its side. I popped the battery out. I put it down on its side over here on my little eFest charger and I put the battery in the charger and I just, I was thinking in my head, I'm not gonna use this any box, I'm just gonna wait for this battery to charge. I put it on its side, leaked everywhere. That was the first time it leaked when I laid it on its side. Additionally, if you have a mod that you have to lay on its side to prevent it from leaking, then in my opinion, that is not a good mod if you have to modify something the way that it's used or modify something physically when it's brand new just so it will work correctly to me in my opinion I feel like I'm beating a dead horse I've said this so many times that is not a good thing that's not a good device if someone was trying to sell you a car and they're like oh yeah this is a great car but it leaks oil like crazy if you drive it forward but it won't leak oil at all you just have to drive it backwards all the time no one would buy that car ever it's the same thing for any consumer product. If Apple was selling iPhones and they said, well, the screen doesn't really come on unless you hold this button down the whole time you want to use the screen and the screen will just suddenly turn off if you let go of that certain button. Nobody would buy that phone. Nobody would go, oh, okay, that's reasonable. That's a reasonable thing to have to deal with to put up with using this phone. You go, no, because there are other products that don't have to do that, that accomplish the same basic thing. So when I look at the AnyBox and I go, it's a really good vape, but it just freaking leaks, I'm not willing to put up with laying on its side to prevent it from leaking or holding it upside down to prevent it from leaking. I go, no, to me, that is not a good product because I can get a numerous other amount of tanks, ready? I can grab this right here. We're gonna be talking about this in the first impression. This is the Vapor Flask Stout with the Aspire Cletus tank on there that for some reason I call it the Cletus tank. It's called the Salido tank. This, I can hold upright, it doesn't leak. I can hold it sideways, wow. it doesn't leak. I can hold it upside down, it doesn't leak. I can put it in any configuration and it doesn't leak. But you know what it does do is it gives me a very, very good vaping experience without having to deal with the bullshit of Oh, well, your O-rings are too small, so put dental floss around it. Or it leaks, so you have to put it on the side, this, that, and the other. You shouldn't have to mod and adapt to things right out of the box. They should just work. I think we should not be willing to put up with stuff like a leaky any box, you know, fresh out of the box, brand new mod that leaks. That's not, that's unreasonable to me in my opinion. And I think I've, uh, I think I've made my peace there. So, wow. Okay. Sorry. Long rant over. So we're going to do a real quick, what have I been vaping recently in this segment? It just keeps getting longer and longer and longer. So what I'm going to do is just talk about the things I've been vaping like in the last few days. Uh, this weekend I was in Las Vegas, like uh, hopefully some people maybe saw on Instagram. I don't know. Had a great time with Ruby and Josh. Casey had just a just a fantastic time. Um, it was some business, right? I didn't completely lie. There was some business going on. So what did I take with me to Las Vegas? Well, I took the Ruby mod 
the the Kennedy Ruby mod, which is nowhere to be found. I'm assuming the lady stole it and she took it to work with her because she likes to steal vapes. So I'm assuming she took that. I also took the new Continuous Current Jux. We talked about that in the last vlog. I did a first impression. I took that and the Payload RDA with Bonsai Vapors VHS. This was a really great vape in Vegas. You know what I mean? I like walking around the strip with a mech mod because it's smaller. I can carry two 18650s on my person, spare 18650s. When I feel like I need to swap it out, I swap it out. It's a mech mod, so I'm not really super worried about like being out and being drunk and setting it down and just Oh, it fell, and now it's rolling across the ground, and this, that, and the other. It's a durable mech mod. I don't have to worry about things breaking. And additionally, it was a really, really good vape. Just a really, really good, reliable vape. Additionally, I did take my Noisy Cricket. Shocking, right? Shocking about the Noisy Cricket. I took that Boson RDA as well, and I was kind of going back and forth. I was putting the Boson on the Paraxis Decimus, and then I was putting it on the Noisy Cricket, and I kind of like the vape I get off of the Noisy Cricket better. This is a dual fuse Clapton in here. It comes out to 0.38 ohms, and on a series box, that is perfect. I've been getting a lot, a lot of emails recently about people who've bought the Noisy Cricket and don't know how to build on it, and they're really, really confused, and this one dude recently was building single coil 0.2 ohms uh, for the Noisy Cricket, and I'm like, that's too low. That's too low, bro. That's going to burn out on you really fast. What you need to do is build higher. This is 40 gauge over 26 gauge dual core dual fuse Clapton and it came out to 0.38 and on the series box the noisy cricket it's just fantastic I've been rocking it with the Lane Cove Mai which is oh just a spectacular juice I love it I freaking love this vape also, the Twisted Messes RDA and the Praxis Decimus. I brought this with me to Las Vegas. In fact, these were swapped. So my Twisted Messes RDA was on the Noisy Cricket and the Boson RDA was on my Praxis. And then for some reason, when I got home, I just decided to switch them. And I have no idea why. It literally makes no sense. This is, uh, what build is this? This is, oh, this is Kent's series build he sent me. It's like that really high gauge Clapton that I was using. Um, I have this set to seven volts on here. It's 106 watts at 0.45 ohms. It's just a great vape. You can rock higher resistance stuff uh, on the Decimus and I really, really like it. The Decimus, which has a review coming very, very soon, does have that slight, someone pointed it out to me, it has that slight pause like it's like a 0.3 second pause from between when you press the button and when it fires it's not as bad as some other mods because i didn't honestly even notice it until someone pointed it out but now that someone pointed it out i go yeah i notice it every single time still a really good vape um grim cult yig twisted messes praxis praxis decimus good really really good vape. So yeah, that's what I brought to Vegas with me. Um, I'm going to have, I actually, so I brought another atomizer too. We're going to talk about this atomizer in the first impressions, but this is the new atomizer from Sub Ohm Innovations. I'm stoked that they have a really, really good product now. So I've always not really, kind of not really been a fan of Sub Ohm Innovations. They did the Big Dripper the Big Dripper version 2, which bleh, I didn't really like either of those. But now they've released this Sub-Zero Dripper, which is, wow, I was impressed by this like right away. I'm having a little bit of a leaking issue, which we're going to talk about in the first impressions, but the airflow on it is stellar. The DAC on it is great, and it's interesting the way that, pardon me, things get adjusted, this, that, and the other, but uh, I got... Cult Rainbow Sherbet. I don't know why I'm burping so much right now. This is ridiculous. I haven't even had any beer yet. Grim Cult Rainbow Sherbet in the dark. It's on the MX box. It is a 0.4 ohm coil. I have it set to 89 watts, which it could probably stand to go up much more. But uh, as it stands, this is still a really great vape. Nice. Really, really nice. Really, really nice. So, yeah. That's quickly what I've been vaping this week. So I do have one ooh, quick, short 
advocacy thing to do. So CASA sent me an email. And if you're a CASA member, then you got this email as well. I'm actually twice a CASA member. I signed up with my personal email address and then I signed up again with Nick at GrimGreen.com since that's the email I predominantly use. But CASA sent out an email uh, very, very recently that says, help us say thank you to the HR 2058 supporters. Nick, that's me. You live in a district represented by a co-sponsor of HR 2058, which would change the grandfather date for newly deemed tobacco products and allow for vapor products currently on the market to remain on the market. This is an incredibly important thing. Currently, there are 41 co-sponsors. Although this is a small number of supporters in Congress, some of the gratitude that early co-sponsors have received from constituents has created a little bit of a buzz. Congressmen, like a lot of people, love receiving thank you notes and it gives them the opportunity to share the positive review with their colleagues. Help us generate some momentum behind HR 2058 by taking a moment now to send your representative a message of support and gratitude for co-sponsoring the FDA Deeming Authority Clarification Act, HR 2058. So not all the CASA members got this. I apologize. If you live in a district where your congressman has co-sponsored HR 2058, then yes, you got this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to follow the instructions real fast. I'm going to click here and I'm going to thank, uh, doesn't tell me. Yeah, let's see. Let me put in my zip code and you can check your zip code. Why, why, why? Okay. Well, I need to check my zip code, blah, 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 this, that, and the other. I don't know why it's acting so finicky, but I'm going to put a link in the description to this CASA call to action where you can thank your co-sponsor. You put in your uh, zip code, it'll check, and it says, oh, yes, you live in a district where someone in your zip code has supported HR 2058, so you get to thank them. This is you thanking your congressman for co-sponsoring HR 2058. We need as many supporters and as many co-sponsors as we can possibly get on HR 2058. I can't even remember how many times in the vlogs throughout the last like three to four months I've been talking and talking and talking about HR 2058. Keep that momentum going. We want to support these co-sponsors. We want to support the congressmen that support this bill because it's a very, very, very good bill. So with that said, we've kind of already we've kind of already covered a lot. We covered up, we cleared up some velocity issues. Uh, there's no ceramic coil updates. We talked about the any box, and I went on a little rant. We've talked about what I've been vaping. We're supporting the co-sponsors of HR 2058. What I want to do right now is get over to that beer section. Oh, feeling so much better. All right, time to taste some beer. So this is another beer that came to me from Metal Gear Vapor. This comes from Highland Brewing Company out of Asheville, North Carolina, which I'll be in North Carolina. Vapor Slam, bro, it's happening in March. I'll post a link in the description where you can check it out, but I'm excited to get back to North Carolina. And he sent me Highland Brewing Company's Black Mocha Stout. So looking on the beer advocate site, it's got a solid 87% rating. The top reviewer says, and I always like, you know me, I always like to check the top reviewer's scores. He gave it a three and a half out of five, or sorry, 3.4 out of five. Very dark brown body with light brown soapy head, heavy roast mocha in the finish while some creamy in mouth. Some How does the top reviewer getting away with saying while some creamy in mouth? That is just a weird sentence to say. Some astringency in the, astringency in the finish as well. Lacy, bitterness on the heavy side. So neither would I say clean na- taste nor black, but still a worthwhile try. Thank you, top reviewer on Freaking Beer Advocate for your horrible, horrible grammar. But I'm going to post a link in the description to not only the Beer Advocate site, but the Highland Brewing Company in North Carolina. I myself have Scottish heritage, proud member of Clan Buchanan, and uh, I'm excited about this. Uh, I'm excited about this beer. I got my old gross, uh, dirty snap-on bottle opener. Again, no corks because fuck corks. In fact, it's been a while since I've had a beer with a cork and now I'm like nervous about getting a beer with a cork. Uh, It's going in the Grim Army Tulip glass, kind of, but not really over my keyboard anymore. And yeah, this beer is wow, super dark. Wow, wow, super dark. 
That is a super dark beer. It's got a very sort of tan. It is soapy. I would describe that as soapy. It's not like nitro, like when you get a beer on nitro and the bubbles are really, really, really tiny and it just looks like like foam on top, like a, like a thick foam on top. This is very, very soapy. The bubbles are a little bit bigger than normal. I'm really looking forward to this. I am a huge fan of mocha stouts, coffee stouts. Like I say, always say, the modern times, Black House is one of just one of my favorite beers of all time. I absolutely think it's spectacular. And so this this kind of has a lot to uh, kind of has a lot to live up to. So let's see how it goes. Thank you, Metal Go Vapor, for sending this beer my way. Cheers. Here's to you, vlog viewers. Okay. Yeah. It's it's carbonated. It's effervescent. Um, it's not really as dark as I was expecting it to be. Uh, if I had a scale of one to ten, and the Mega Black House is like a solid eight of like heavy stouty stoutness then this is probably like a four and a half like it doesn't feel super dark and stouty in my mouth it actually if i closed my eyes and drank this i would envision a much much lighter beer for being a black mocha stout and being this dark in the cup I would expect it to have a little bit more pungency and a little bit lingering of a finish. As it stands, it's not very pungent and the finish is very, very clean on it. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to tell that that's a mocha stout uh, just from tasting it. If this was a blind taste test and I closed my eyes, I would peg this as like an American style lager. It does not have that... Uh, stouty sort of heartiness pungentness to it that I really look for in a stout it's nice I mean the flavor is good it's really really easy drinking let me just get the rest of this in there because we're gonna have uh, you know we're gonna drink this whole thing let me check the alcohol 5% alcohol so no big deal I won't be shammered by the end of the video but yeah I was kind of uh, uh oh uh oh <clears throat> It's kind of just expecting a little bit more flavor, a little bit more pungency to it. Um, what I think I'm going to pair with this, first I'm gonna try uh, caramelized bananas. I just have a feeling that might pair pretty well. I have this on the Militia Mod. Um, it's on the new Comfape Double Vision RDA, which we're gonna be talking about in the first impressions. Let me power this nonsense up. Make sure it's not locked. 0.12 ohms, 100 watts, gives me 3.4 volts, which is just fine for this right now. Let's uh, let's give it a pairing. It's good. It's pretty good. Um, I think Yig's going to pair much better with it. Um I just think it's going to pair much better with it. Yig's like my go-to beer drinking vape. If I'm going to be drinking beer, chances are good that I'm going to be vaping Yig at the same time. Yeah, it's good. Actually, it's not that great. I thought I was expecting I was expecting a little bit more from that pairing. You know what juice would pair amazing with this that I don't have in anything at the last OC Vapors Club meet I got a bottle of golden ticket and it's supposed to be like a chocolate milk flavor that juice would pair uh, just amazeballs with this beer but as it stands I don't have it loaded up in anything and I'm not about to do it right now just for this beer pairing <laughs> But that's what I got. That's what I got for beer. Uh, yeah, it's great. If you've had this beer, uh, let me know. I like the beers that come out of North Carolina, generally. The Duck Rabbit Milk Stout's one of my favorites, and uh, I was kind of expecting a little bit more. But still, I'm going to drink this. I'm going to enjoy it. Thank you, Metal Gear Vapor, for sending it my way. What we're going to do after we've consumed beer is do a couple shout-outs. It is shout-out. 
All right, well, we got some time to do a couple shout outs here. This first shout out comes to me from uh, Katie. She writes to me and says, Hey, Nick, uh, my name is Katie and my boyfriend, Chris, is a huge fan of your videos. Of course, I get dragged into watching them as well, but I find the issues very interesting. Well, there you go, Katie. I'm sorry that you got dragged into these. So, so, uh, keep, so keep doing what you're doing. He's a recovering alcoholic and started vaping to stop smoking. He's so passionate about vaping and would love to get a shout out from the one and only. He thinks he is very popular on Instagram and I think a like or follow from you would make his life <laughs> he would love you uh, thoughts he would love your thoughts and two minutes of attention thanks bro keep up the amazing support and channel respectfully Catherine absolutely you know what I'm just let me jump on uh, let me jump on the Instagram and search for search for your guy here I seriously cannot believe my wife my Wi-Fi is down right now that's gonna make this vlog mm, a little bit more difficult to get through. I'm gonna go through, let's just like a whole bunch of photos. That one looks good. This guy looks like a, looks like a and let me turn down my brightness here. I don't know which one's you. There you go, you look like a, look like a good guy. Like that one, like that one, like that one, like that one. See, I'm giving it away right now that I'm doing his shout out in the vlog. Because then he's gonna see all of the uh, all of the likes, and he's gonna go, "Why the hell is Grim Green liking all my photos?" But then he'll see the vlog. Shout out! It'll all make sense. Absolutely, consider yourself uh, consider yourself shouted out there, Chris and uh, Katie. Thank you for sending that. Uh, thank you for sending that my way. Small request: This guy uh, Ethan wrote to me. Wrote. Yeah, sure. Wrote to me and then said, "Hey, Nick. My name is Ethan. I'm wondering if I could get a shout out in a future vlog." So this is from back in August. Um, I get a lot of shout out requests and I'm trying to get through them as, <laughs> as much as I can. I was wondering if I could get a shout out in a future vlog. My one year vape anniversary is coming up in September. Well, happy belated vape anniversary. I was a pack and a half day smoker for eight years. I was inspired to quit after having our first child, not wanting him to grow up seeing me smoking. I've never made a better decision in my life. I watch all your videos and I put a lot of stock in your opinion. I'm also a big Namber Juice fan, shameless plug, uh, and beer lover. Sorry this email is running long, but if you could just also shout out my wife, Laura, for putting up with my obsession and vaping, it would be much, much appreciated. Take care, be well, and always, yes, let's keep on vaping. Absolutely. Ethan and your wife, Laura, you are both uh, you are both shouted out. Thank you for the support. I like it. Uh, I like uh, hearing from people that actually enjoy the videos. That just That's one of my favorite things ever. So... Got room for, we got some time for a couple more in here. Um, so this one comes to me from someone that does not want their name uh, used. Okay, it says, you can read my email loud, just please do not use my name. Okay, okay, so this is, uh, starts off and says, okay, so this is odd. I just wanted to say that the other day, my boyfriend sent me a screenshot of something he found on Instagram. I've attached the picture uh, he sent me of it. Back in November, I had a vape mat made for him for Christmas, and Matt from Vape Mats posted the vape mat on Instagram and tagged a bunch of people on it. But of course, he couldn't tag my boyfriend because it would have killed the surprise. But hashtag Grim Army was one of those tags. He was so excited about seeing all the tags, but most of all, most of all, you were in the tags. My boyfriend was a longtime smoker, and he got into vaping when my son and his friends introduced him. Happy to say he recently celebrated his two-year anniversary of vaping. He is a huge vaping advocate, and nothing makes him more happy than to get someone to quit smoking and start vaping. That's what makes all of us happy. That's what makes me the most happy, too. He has recently also had a birthday on December 27th. Happy belated birthday. At the same time, uh, uh, and the same day, we lost his grandfather. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. He had a pretty rough end of 2015. He is one of the most important people in my life. We have went through some pretty big changes in our lives and in the last few years, and I can ima could not imagine going through it without him by my side. If you could, sometime in 2016, shout him out. That would be awesome. You don't have to wait that much longer. January 2016, absolutely uh, consider yourselves shouted out names that I won't be getting used he didn't she didn't even tell me her boyfriend's name he is just honestly referred to as the boyfriend in this entire in this entire email you are the boyfriend and then 
she does not want me to use her name. So there you go. No names being used. But here's a shout out for the, this email that I just read. All right. Well, we're getting back into December now. Hey, Nick, my name is Drew Ann and my boyfriend Brayden is a huge fan. He has been watching your videos nonstop and I can't get him to sleep while he watches your vlogs. <laughs> Anyway, he's been saying he wants a shout out from you and he doesn't know I'm doing this, but I'm waiting till he pulls up one of your videos and here's his name. He's been wanting to start a career and open his own business for vaping products. Maybe you can give him a few tips of encouragement, but thank you if you ever get a chance to read this. Hashtag Grim Green. Absolutely. Drew Ann, Brayden. Brayden, you're probably laying in bed right now, I'm assuming with an iPhone or an iPad, maybe a laptop, but I'm assuming it's some sort of mobile device. You're watching the vlog, yes, consider yourselves shouted out, both of you. As far as starting up a vape business, I'm gonna tell you what I tell a lot of people. Starting a vape business is literally no different than starting any other business. You need to have startup money, you need to have a place to run your business from, it costs money to start a business, you're gonna have to pay taxes to the federal government, to the state government, you're gonna be uh, you know, a company, in a, an official company in the eyes of the government, so you're gonna have to pay taxes, you're gonna have employees, you're gonna have overhead, uh, study, learn up on business before you start a vape business, if that makes any sense. It's more important in a vape business to know about business before you know about vaping. Vaping is the fun part that you get to learn about and learn about all these cool products and coil building and tanks and juices and yeah, and posters. That's the fun part. That's the fun part to learn about. The boring part to learn about is how to actually start and run a business. That's the boring part, but unfortunately, it's the most necessary part of starting up a uh, starting up a vape business. So last shout out over here. This, uh, this comes to me from a fellow named Riker, which is actually his name, and that is a fucking cool name. He writes to me and says, I'm emailing you in hopes of getting a shout out for my dad, Harold. He was a pack or more a day smoker for 26 years. He quit smoking, switched to vaping on April 16th, 2013. He progressed from blues to ego. Pardon me. Wow. Burp right in the middle of a shout out. He progressed from blues to egos based on your recommendations. Later, when he wanted to upgrade to a mod, he reached out to you and you recommended the Vamo. Oh, so this is a while ago, which he then vaped into the ground. You taking the time to reply to him meant a lot to him and even more importantly, helped keep him off cigs. I am so very proud of him. Finally quitting cigarettes. If you could please shout him out sometime in April 2016. Sorry. I'm sorry, it's not April 2016, it's January. In celebration of this three years, it would be rad. If that's asking too much, I would be more than happy to send this later on so it doesn't clog up your inbox, or if you'd rather shout them out earlier, that's okay too. Okay, good, sorry, sorry. Thank you so much for all what you do for vapors. You positively impact so many lives. Um, keep up the good work, thank you, let's keep on vaping. Absolutely, Riker, you know what? You're shouted out too. I shout out the person who requests the shout out as well. And Harold, you are definitely shouted out. I'm really, really glad that that Vamo, way back in 2013, three years ago, back in 2013, I'm glad the Vamo worked out for you. I hope you have a cool setup that you're rocking now. And uh, yeah, I just, I hope you're enjoying vaping. That's what it's all about. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Riker, for sending that in. Well, I think that's going to... Wrap up the shout outs. I want to get into these first impressions because there's going to be a bunch of them and I have a feeling I'm going to ramble and talk about stuff that's just going on. So let's get there now. Let's get to some first impressions. All right. So my first two pre first impressions are going to be actual literal, <coughs> pardon me, literal first impressions of products that I have not even got out of the box yet. You'd sent over a package and it includes some coils it looks like there's some round wire in here some twisted coils some more twisted coils and some claptons and it's like this little ferris they call it the ferris wheel coil box there's just a whole mess of different coils in here sure which is interesting i'm interested to try that out they also sent over wire box uh builder's choice and so there's small spools this is what this is a wire dispenser so there's 26 gauge uh 
32 gauge over 26 gauge Clapton wire. There's 28 gauge twisted, 26 gauge standard stainless steel 316L, uh, 26 gauge uh, nickel 200, 26 gauge nichrome, and 26 gauge straight canthal. So interesting. You loves to sell like pre clapton and pre twisted wires, even though I get selling pre Clapton's because not really everybody can do that or have the or has the time to even do it but twisting wires twisting wires is easy i don't see the reason to spend extra to twist wires honestly i don't see the reason to spend extra to pre-buy clapton wires either but you'd you'd loves to sell it so one thing the device that they sent over oh and it's a coil jig kit oh this is the coil kit that m turk uses oh awesome I actually really like this one. I'm interested to try that out. So I'm gonna give that a try. So they sent over the Balrog 70. Uh, this is a device where things fall out of the box. Balrog 70 USB cable. And it's a, if I can get this out of here. <clears throat> oh, look at that. It's a little single 18650 uh, I'm assuming 70 watt device. What the hell is that? That just fell out of the battery case. Oh, that's a, uh, what the hell? This is a neck lanyard. <laughs> it's a neck lanyard. So you can have, you have this, you have your gorilla straps. You just have like five mods all hanging from your shoulders. And there's a little screw right here for this to go into. That is actually kind of really cool. You screw this into the mod, and then you can hang it. Like, the Balrog will hang from your neck. So if you're at a meet, you can just go, Oh, yeah, sure, let's grab a picture. Boom, just drop it. Don't even see where it goes. Could be on the ground. Nope, it's hanging around my neck. So this is their little 70-watt device. I'm going to throw a battery in here, and it comes with a tank. Whoops. It comes with a, with a dinky little tank right here that looks to be... Oh, no, it's a top fill tank. Hey, that's cool. Cool little top fill tank right there. Probably uses uh, little coil heads and that's what is included here as well. Oh yeah, look at those little coil heads. That is a tiny little coil head. Which is this one? So that is nickel. That one is canthal. And then what's, that means the one in here by process of elimination is probably titanium. That's what I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess that the, that the coil head in here is titanium. Nope, it just says 0.5 ohm. See, this is the process that I go through every single time with every product I get. This one says 1.8 ohm. So yeah, I'm gonna put that, let's put the 1.8 ohm in. Why not? Why not? Let's be adventurous. Let's put the 1.8 ohm coil head in here. So what I'm hoping is that I can lung inhale this and that I can use it at a lower wattage and get more battery life out of my uh, single 18650 battery. So we're gonna open up this airflow all the way. Uh, it's a little bit tight. It's a little bit tight. I mean, it's not too tight to lung inhale, but it is it is on the tight side. So you know what? I'm gonna be doing some uh, some more Lane Cove. I got some Samantha from Ruby Roo uh, because I hadn't had it in a really, really long time and uh, I missed it and it's a good juice. So I'm gonna put some juice on this coil head. I'm gonna pre-juice up this coil head here. Let that, let that soak in. And then I'm gonna take off the top and I'm just gonna fill up this tank. Now the fill holes on this are kind of weird. They're off to the side. It's like a little juice well, and then the, the holes that you have to pour the juice in are on the sides of this chamber because this that you screw back down actually goes down in. It'll make much more sense when I actually do a full video for it, but that's just, I mean, off the top of my head, that's what, uh, that's what it looks like. All right. Well, we got some Samantha in the tank. We got the Balrog on. It's set to 70 watts, so I'm going to turn that down. So it's, we have it set to 46 watts. Now what I do when I'm initially priming a coil is I turn the wattage down really, really low so that I can take a couple toots and get that juice flowing in there without actually burning the coils up. So I'm going to turn this down to, I'm going to turn this down even lower. I'm going to turn this down to like seven and a half watts.
yeah, you see a little bit of vapor there. That's just getting those coils primed at a low, low wattage will really help out and you can slowly start turning it back up and you don't have to worry about dry hits or anything like that. 20 watts. That is a seriously stiff airflow. I'm going to put this at 30 watts and then we'll call it good. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, oh, 30 watts. 30 watts, 1 0.8 ohm coil heads. You don't see that much anymore. And I'm wondering with this 1.8 ohm if I can turn off the airflow and get possibly a mouth to lung situation out of this. As it stands, uh, that needs to be lung inhaled. Pretty nice little coil head. Uh, I have a feeling this is too hot. The airflow is really stiff. The airflow is at that really awkward in between a lung hit and a mouth to lung hit like i wish this was just straight up mouth to lung tank that could be used for mouth to lung i turn the airflow all the way down to one tiny little hole i've got it set to 23 watts 1.8 ohms mouth to lung that's weird and interesting it actually works really well i still think the airflow is a little bit too open even at one hole there to do uh, to do really consistent mouth to lungs like I feel like this was designed to be a straight lung inhale it's just really stiff it's a really really stiff airflow anyway yeah ball rog 70 from you now you they make the Zephyrus version 2 the goblin mini I mean they you has highly decent products so well I don't know we'll see let's see how well I get along with this Balrog 70. If anything else, I just kind of like this. I like that I can screw a screw into the mod itself and have it hang from a lanyard on my persons. Like, this would be rocking for a vape meet. Just rocking. So really quickly, another Ude product that I have here is the Starling. The Ude Starling. And just from looking at the packaging, yep, this is going to kind of be there version of like the ego one or the i just it's the same tank it's the same exact tank same exact tank wow that's the same exact tank it's the same exact tank but in black where the hell's the button there's no button is it an auto switch that feels a little bit more open actually than the than the tank that came with the ball rog it's the same tank in the future, I gotta not do these like blind first impressions going in. It does look like it uses light as utilizes the same coil heads. This is a 1.8 ohm, and the one in here is 0 0.5 ohm. So I guess we're gonna fill up another tank with some juice. Got some glacier banana here just because I've been craving it recently. So let's put a couple drops in there. Oh yeah, look at that. Soaks right in. Soaks right in. Now we just have to fill up the tank. I still don't know where the button is on that thing. This is a little bit more tricky with this bottle. The juice holes to fill up the tank are on the side, so you have to kind of hold it at this crazy angle. Oh, and I just filled up the center with juice. Son of a bitch. It's going to come. Oh, it's coming out the juice holes. Oh, god damn it. Oh, you'd why? Oh, fucking hell. I have juice literally fucking everywhere right now. Thank you, Yude. Thank you. I just want a full tank. Why won't you let me have a full tank? There's juice uh, currently pouring out of the juice flow holes. But what I'm going to do is screw this back together. I'm going to give it a... I'm going to take this juice air control flow off. Yep, juice. God damn it. <laughs> I am a mess right now. You would not believe. Okay, okay. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Now I can taste this minty banana all over my person. I got freaking juice all over my jeans. I got it all over my hands. I got it all over everywhere. But that's what that's what we do. That's for science. You know what I mean? For science. Now, there's no way to adjust this, and I still don't know where the button is. I'm going to have to fucking look at the directions. It's all in French. <laughs> Just kidding. It's not. So this instruction manual is just for the tank I, that instruction manual is just for the tank it's not an auto switch oh the switch is on the bottom 
You're kidding me. The switch is on the bottom. It's like a mech mod. That is so bizarre. When I press the bottom, lights up on the bottom. One, two, three, four, five. Off. One, two, three, four, five. On. That's amazing. Dude, I've only been through two products right now in this review. This first impressions is far, far too long. I'm going to have to narrow down what I talk about this week. Sorry. Sorry. It's going to happen. Now that is a really nice vape. 0.5 on a, what I'm assuming is some sort of unregulated, like mechanical style 18650. There's a button in the bottom. I pulled this up, the uh, source more, which this is the first one that came up in my search results. I've never bought from sourcemore.com, but they have the Ude Starling. They call it a box mod, 25 watts, 1500 ma battery with adjustable top airflow sub ohm stainless steel tank for 34 bucks ships around february 17th so neither of these are out yet wow this is weird i do really like that button on the bottom but 1500 milliamp and a it says 25 watts could it be a regulated 25 watts that why do they keep calling it a box mod <laughs> this website is driving me insane Salute to classic mechanical mod intelligent LED indicator light bottom firing design. Simplify simplify and dedicate design with superior vaping experience. Oh, you'd. I love it when Chinese companies just get lost in translation. Provides best value. Metallic integrated body simplified but not simple. Just born for perfect. <laughs> Just born for perfect. Has unibottle, unimetal housing designed for simplicity. I wonder if they designed it for simplicity. So it doesn't say if it's regulated or unregulated. I'm operating under the assumption that it's an unregulated battery, meaning that over the course of the battery of the life, uh, this will change colors to something red or something that's going to, you know, slowly die. But... This is actually kind of really cool. I wish it had a bigger battery life. Wow, anyway, seems to be working good now that I cleaned up my juice spill. Uh, as always, you know, I need to spend way more time with my first impressions before I feel comfortable talking about them, especially this Starling and this Balrog since they literally just arrived. I'm going to pop those on the ground. I'm going to put you, Starling, over here. I'm going to put you, Balrog, around my neck. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put you over here. Okay, so let's get to the uh, Altus. Let's get to this Altus tank. I got an Altus tank from Origin Vape. Origin Vape sent over the Altus Coilus Atomizer by Guo. And I've watched a bunch of videos on this already, and believe it or not, there are YouTubers out there already that already have reviews for this. They've already made their final decision on this product, and they felt comfortable enough to talk about it on YouTube and do a full review for this. Me, I've had this a week, and I am nowhere fucking near ready to talk about this on video. Some people are telling me I can use it with temp control. Some people are telling me I can't use it with temp control. Some people are telling me it's really easy to rewick. Some, team, some people are telling me it's really difficult to rewick. I have had such a weird ass experience with this tank. Now, I posted a picture of it on Instagram, but there's these huge wicks that come out of the side, right? And on the inside, there is like what looks like a fin, like a chip type of situation and you your cotton goes up and down and then out right and so the idea is this whole surface heats up and vaporizes your juice and the creator has some interesting explanations about how currents travel and juice vaporization and this that and the other it's really weird to fill. That's what I'm gonna say right now. I feel comfortable saying it's really weird to fill and you cannot not, not not fill it up all the way. You're limited to about half a tank. If it says that it's like a four mil tank, you're probably getting about two and a half mils into this tank because you can only fill it up so full. Fuck it, let's fill it up right now. I'm gonna pop it upside down, get the rest of the juice down. I'm going to unscrew the base because that's how you have to fill it 
up. You have to unscrew the base, but you have to unscrew the base from the glass. And you're going to see these giant wicks right here. Big old wicks sticking out there. And I can see the heating element in the middle. The cotton around it has turned a very dark black color, which is really weird. And then, so this is how you have to fill up your tank. You can only fill it to the top of this metal chimney that comes up from the base. So you can fill it up about halfway. That's as full as you can fill it. It's about halfway which is kind of annoying. I'm really fascinated by this tank. So I'm gonna put this back in here. When you, when you press it back in your wicks, they leave a nice trail of juice on the outside of your tank because they're so big. So let's screw this back together. I'm gonna make it nice and snug. I'm gonna screw this base back on because I don't think that's supposed to come off when you're, when you're just refilling it. Now I'm gonna need to get a rag because when I put it all back together, juice everywhere. It's a pain in the ass to fill up. But once you fill it up, you got about three quarters of a tank. There's a huge airspace at the top that you will just never be able to fill with juice. You'll never be able to have a full tank. Someone's gonna find a workaround to fill this tank up all the way. The vape on it is really, really fucking weird, man. So this coil in here, which isn't a coil, it's a heating element is big and flat. And the description on here is ridiculous. They say that this is a 22 millimeter diameter tank. Hogwash, I say, because it's on the vapor flask right now and there's about a millimeter all the way around that's hanging over the vapor flask. There's not a chance that this is 22 millimeters. I'm guessing it's 23 millimeters unless Suddenly the vapor flasks stopped being 22 millimeters around, which I don't think because when I put my Twisted Messes RDA on there or any other RDA or the Aspire Cletus or any other tank, it just fits on there nice and flush. This one clearly, you can feel it and you can see it is hanging out over the edge of the vapor flask. So when you vape this, I have it set to, so it's a 0.34 ohm heating element, right? I have it set to 66 watts and it's given me 4.7 volts. The first drag that I take on it is basically nothing. Exhibit A. Basically nothing, right? And so I'm like, wow, maybe I need to crank up my wattage. I had this up to 100 watts. No matter what wattage I set it at, the first drag that I do is basically nothing. There is an insane ramp up time on this heating element chip thing on the inside. Insane ramp up time. So I take one full long drag pressing the button and I get a piddly little cloud. But if I take another drag right away, I'll get a nice warm cloud of vapor, which is what you want from a sub ohm tank. Two, that is a lot of ramp up time. Having to take two drags to get that performance, that is a lot of ramp up time. Now, this is the stock wick. I haven't re-wicked it. It comes wicked. This is the stock wick. It works great. The flavor on it, nice. The airflow, huge, nice, open swooshy airflow that you can close down. Hmm, it's kind of a little bit better closed off a little bit. Piddly. Amazing. I don't know why. Every single time, the first hit sucks, the second hit is freaking awesome. And people were saying, oh no, it's just got a break in time. I've been using this for one solid week now, and every single time, my first hit sucks, and my second hit is great. It's just nice, wonderful, flavorful vapor. Now, they say on here it's not metallic. They also say on here it's non-toxic. I don't know if GUO, G-U-O, includes any sort of 
safety stuff or MSDS, but he definitely has a bunch of videos and you can watch them and he re-wicks it and shows you the heating element, which I hope to do in the full review when I'm actually gonna re-wick it and show you the heating element. I just wanna see how this holds up over time. I've been trying to use this a lot and hit this really, really hard just to see. I wanna see what it does to the cotton. I wanna see what happens to the flavor over time. I really wanna get a lot of use out of this heating element to see what kind of life and longevity it has. Now, this is a really, really fucking expensive tank. It's like $120? Wow, for a sub-ohm tank. But they're selling it under the guise of you'll never have to buy coil heads ever again, which there's a lot of tanks like Goblin Mini that you don't have to buy coil heads for. You just have to build your coils. With this, you're not buying coil heads, you're not building coils. You have a CVU chip that heats up. It's a heating element and all you do is pop cotton around it, you pop it back in and that's it and you have a new fresh wick, everything. What I wanna see is over time, if this gets gunky, if it drops drastically in performance, if parts of it burn out, I mean, I don't know the technology that they're using in this. Nobody except for the creator really knows the technology that they're using in this. And let me just read you my favorite, my favorite sentence from the description. Using a cutting edge Silicon Valley material that was developed over two years ago, this tank has a CVU chip or center vaping unit that has been granted over a dozen patents in the United States and lasts for years. Lasts for years, not four years, but for years. So the idea is you're gonna spend 120 bucks on this tank and you will never have to build a coil. You will never have to buy a replacement. It's going to last and last and last and last. You're gonna get nothing but good performance and good flavor and good vapor. That's the idea. It's certainly not 22 millimeters. I can feel the edge on there. But like with all my first impressions, I'm gonna need to spend way, way more time with this Altus tank. It's so far been really interesting. The only weird thing that I've come across so far is that it's really hard to fill. It's not 22 millimeters around. And it has that really, really big ramp up time. And I don't know if that's, actually a ramp up time because a ramp up time would indicate that the longer you drag on it the better the performance would get right it would just get hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter this seems to get turned on like you activate the chip and your first drag is like Bleh. and now the chip is on so your second drag is like hey right i mean that's the way i see it in my head first drag Piddly. Second drag. Amazing. Like worlds better. Worlds better. Third drag. Third drag's really good too. But if I let it sit and cool down, it's going to do that weird thing again. I don't know. I'm fascinated by this tank. I love the idea of it. I like new and exciting products in vaping, especially with something like this where you might not have to build coils. You don't have to buy coil heads. You can just re-wick it. Um, if anything else, this is a really, really interesting proof of concept. I'd love to see them change the tank design so that it's a top fill tank and so that you have the ability to actually fill up the whole tank and I'd like to see them maybe make that heating element a little bit smaller or let you buy different resistant heating elements instead of having it constantly be 0.4 ohms. Um, that's just, I'm just spitballing ideas here. Look, uh, Guo, if you need a consultant, hit me up and I'll give you plenty of terrible ideas for your devices. But like with all my first impressions, I'm gonna spend way, way more time with this. That second warm vape that I get I will say is really, really nice. Flavorful, moist, 
warm, delicious vapor right into your mouth hole. I just don't understand why it has to happen the second time you take a drag. Look at that powerful cloud. Now, there's a lot going on here. I'm just going to read a couple more. I'm just going to read one more thing on here that I found interesting. The surface of the CVU does not oxidize under 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. It can be used with temperature control functionality up to 200 watts and 480 degrees. This will undoubtedly work on any regulated mod with or without temp control from 25 to 75 watts. Let's try it in temp control. For the first time, how about we try it in temp control? Okay, so I have the uh, SX flask set to 50 joules, it's set to 485 degrees, or 480 degrees, just like they say. The resistance it's reading right now is 0.06, and it constantly is giving me a dry coil, no liquid. So what I think I'm gonna do is set it to nickel mode. I'll tell you one thing right now, this does not work in temperature mode on the SX flask. It's reading the resistance really, really low. It says 0.06, um, 50 joules, 478 degrees, uh, I can't get it. I tried it as nickel and I tried it as titanium and it's both reading really, really, really low resistances. Won't work, dry coil, no liquid. Okay, well, whatever. Got it set back to 66 watts. It's reading a 0.36. It's set on powerful mode. Uh, it's giving me 4.8 volts. So, Last time I'm going to say this with all my first impressions, I need to spend way more time with this Altus tank. If people are going to be spending 120 bucks on a single tank, I have to make sure that, uh, at least in my opinion, that it's actually uh, worth it. So, got it. Got. Now I'm going to try to wrap this up. I got like two more first impressions. All right, now there's not going to be a whole lot to say about this RDA. This RDA came from Comp Vape. It is their Double Vision RDA, which is essentially the Twisted Messes RDA with a two-post velocity style deck. It's not a velocity style deck, it's a two-post deck with two holes instead of four holes. Two giant, ovally shaped holes. And I did my first, like, yeah, you know, kind of slightly fancy build. What I did was a dual-fused Clapton with 40 gauge over 26 gauge for the Clapton, and then I paralleled that with 26 gauge round wire. I posted a picture on Instagram. I was really excited. I'm like, well, cool. That's a cool build, and I don't generally do cool builds, and it's a cool build. Came out to, let's fire you up, Militia Mod, 0.12 ohms, I have it sitting at 100 watts on the Militia Mod, which may or may not get a review in the near future. This is the one I picked up at, where was that? VPX New Orleans? Was there, or was that at Vapor Dynasty Expo? I think this was at VPX New Orleans. No, 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 I think this was at Vapor Dynasty Expo. I don't even remember where I got this mod. That's how terrible of a person I am. I don't remember where I got this device. It's a DNA 200 with two 18650s, which makes it a DNA 135, but have it set at 100 watts, and uh, this coil build on here has been a really rad vape. If you like the Twisted Messes airflow, you will like the Double Vision airflow. That's just all there is to it. Now, what I don't like is these giant, giant drip tips. What I'm hoping for is that someone, possibly someone who makes caps that I really, really like, like Double Helix Designs, Jess Marie, I want a Twisted Messes uh, cap, one that's maybe fits in, but is maybe a little bit slender, like a little concave, like like this, like shaped like concave, like this. That's That's what I'm after, exactly. That's what I'm after. So, still really good vape. This is a cloud chasing RDA. Yes, yes, that is good. Ooh, that's too much vapor. My smoke alarm's gonna go off now. This has been a really good vape. I've come to really, really love that Twisted Messes airflow. This Double Vision has the exact same airflow, except it's got a really nice two-post deck on there. You can build a nice wide coil for temperature control. Although the post holes are so big, trying to fit like 26 gauge nickel into these post holes, bah. Forget about it. Ridiculous. That's over. You can't do that. It would be it would be really, really difficult. You could probably do it. It would just be really, really difficult. Because I saw the size of those post holes, I knew I wanted to put some sort of 
big gauge fancy build in there. So that's how I ended up with the dual fuse Clapton paralleled with 26 gauge anarchist wire. It's been a really, really nice vape and there's not really a whole lot to say about it. I'll post a link in the description. I'm going to send, uh, you know, some more, I'm going to spend some more time with this RDA before I really give it a full review. 22 millimeter, two post RDA, incredibly easy to build. Six millimeter deep juice well, 304 stainless steel, comes with two decks. That's right, it comes with two decks. It comes with two decks and one cap. So if you have a second deck and you want to rock the Twisted Messes, uh, you know, cap on it, then you can, which I think that's cool. It does come with two decks. I forgot about that. Two decks, slotted post holes, three millimeters by four millimeters. The only 22 millimeter two post RDA that fits a dual Caterpillar track, dual Alien or dual fuse Clapton coils with room to spare. The negative, negative post is milled all the way down to the bottom of the well, not into the sidewall. Uh, keyed silver plated positive post, silver plated contact pin, come with large Delrin drip tip only, comes with black snakeskin style box. Why do they why do they pimp out the box that it comes in? Once you get that box, you're not like, oh god, let me put this RDA down for a second and really enjoy the snakeskin on this box. That is silly. That is ridiculous. But I don't know how much they're going to cost. I'm assuming they'll be reasonable, probably in the $50 to $60 range, which if you never bought a Twisted Messes RDA, maybe now's the time to try out that airflow with the double vision. What I will say is two decks is cool and the two posts with the big holes. That's really, really cool. If you want to throw some crazy, you know, alien skin gargoyle hoof builds at this, then you can certainly do it. Good job. Well done, Comfape. So here's a funny story about this next first impression. Uh, Joy Tech has had my current address since I've lived here, okay? They sent a package like two months ago to my old address, and I didn't know about it. They didn't give me a heads up and say, here's your tracking information, or do you want to verify your address? It just showed up at my old place, and my neighbor was like, hey, I just got a package from the guy who lives in your old place now. He says he's had it for like two months. Do you want me to drop it by? And I was like, yeah, I mean, that would be cool. What was in there was the Joy Tech Cubis tank and the Cuboid mod. Now, I literally just got these like three days ago and I just started using them. And there's already people who have reviews out on YouTube because they've had them much longer because Joy Tech probably sent them two months ago to the correct freaking address. But I digress. I just got this, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about it a little bit. Now, this is the cuboid mod. Cubis tank cuboid mod. Dual 18650. Temperature control looks a lot like the Evic VT on there, except it shows you the life of both your batteries rather than the life of both your batteries combined. It shows you separate battery indicators, which I think is kind of cool. Does uh, temperature control very much the same way that the Evic VT did. You go one, two, three, and you can swap it out between power and you can do temp nickel, you can do temp titanium, and you can do temp stainless steel 316, and then there's memory functions, and then you go back to power. And I've just been leaving this on power because in this Cubis tank, I have a Canthal coil head, and I've kind of enjoyed the feel and fit of this mod. I like that it has a clicky button. I like that it uh, charges via USB if you want. I like the adjustment up and down. Overall, I like the look of it. I even like the little door here for your batteries to go in and out. I mean, that's that's pretty freaking cool. It's like a little snappy door. Now this tank, I've been getting along really, really great with this tank. You cannot rock it at really high wattages. So this is a 0.5 ohm coil. The highest I can go with it is about 36 watts. But the flavor and performance you get from those 36 watts is really, really nice. It's got good, smooth airflow. The flavor, just spot on.
I was impressed by this tank right away. In fact, I'm gonna show you my favorite thing. I'm gonna fill it up. So I got some pink chill in this tank. I'm getting down to the last, uh, you know, whatever, 120 mil of, uh, of pink chill from Ember. I just blow through this juice like crazy. So what I'm gonna do is get a rag here to put this on. Now, when you fill up this tank, when you unscrew it, you'll see what happens. It's kind of amazing. You pull out everything. So you pull this out and the coil head comes out as well. And that's drippy with juice. And all you're left with is like a big open tank, which is so bizarre. I've never seen this before in a tank. And you fill it up and there's a little line that says max. And you just dump juice in here. You just pour juice in here. And I like to go, eh, maybe like one or two millimeters past that max line to really fill up the tank all the way. We're gonna go to like there. I like to I like to overfill my tank for some reason on this. Actually, that might be a little too much because this is gonna displace that juice when you press it in. Oh, right to the top. Oh, that was perfect. Perfection has been achieved. You screw this all the way down. Oh, I got a little bit of juice coming off the top, but now I have a full, fully full, full tank. And the airflow comes in from the top. It goes down to your coil heads and then it comes back up. So it lets you unscrew that whole thing, fill it up with juice, and then that's it. It's a really easy and really unique and cool filling system. And yeah, I filled this up a little bit, a little bit too full. But the vape that I get from it is just fantastic. The flavor is great. Now, granted, I've only had this a couple of days now, so something could go catastrophically wrong in the very near future with both of these, but right now, I'm really, really enjoying them. I'm going to try to use these intensely for maybe the next couple weeks, get a review up sooner rather than later, but so far they've been great. You can adjust the airflow off. You twist this counterclockwise, and the airflow is basically non-existent and then you open it back up it's just great it uses the same airflow i think from those tron tanks the joytech tron tank is in my opinion probably one of the best tanks they made i think this cubis tank is much better and this little combo really really nice It's a great tank. It's just a great tank. You just can't turn it up. And this is kind of, you know, an Ohm's Law thing where, sure, I can rock a 0.4 ohm coil on a series box at 7 volts in an RDA, and it's great. But you can take that same 0.4 ohm coil, put it in a different, you know, system, put in a different coil head or a different tank, and just because of the way the juice is wicking and this, that, and the other, you can't rock it at that high of a voltage. This is at 4 volts. That's it. 4.2 volts. That'd be like essentially rocking this on a mech mod. You can't rock all your coils at the same wattages that you think you can. You can't run. There's no way. If I turned this 0.5 ohm coil up to 7 volts, it would be burnt in just a second. In just one second. But... You can turn down the wattage and still get a really, really great vape. Additionally, you know, if I put a, a 0.5 ohm RDA on here and I rocked it at 35 watts, the vape would be really boring and cool and blah and really humdrum. But once you crank up that wattage and crank up that voltage on an RDA, you get a completely different vaping experience. So just because you can't turn your tank up high doesn't mean you're not getting the peak performance from it, if that makes any sense. I get a lot of questions about, I got such and such tank, but I can only turn it up to 40 watts. And I'm like, then turn it up to 40 watts and, and vape it. <laughs> like, there's no, you don't have to rock 0.5 ohm stuff at really high wattages. You don't have to do that. There's no like rules. There's no one, there's no, uh, you know, vape police that are going to come to your house and say, is that a 0.5 ohm coil? What's the wattage on that? I'm sorry, sir, you're not going to need to come with me. They're not going to arrest you for vaping at the wrong wattages. Just adjust it to taste. Start low, work your way up till you have a satisfying vape. There's no reason to rock things at really high voltages or really high wattages when you don't need to. Okay, so my last my last first impression I want to do is for this atomizer. Now, I'm going to pop this atomizer. I'm going to take a toot real fast 
on this atomizer because I just uh, I just love it so much. What is this? 0.4 ohms, 140 watts. Perfect example. This is a little over five volts. No oh, man, I've been having a love affair with this atomizer. Subom Innovations really did something nice here. I'm going to pull the O-ring off of this and try it on a DHD cap and see if that fits on there because that would be really, really cool. But as it stands, I do like this drip tip quite a bit. Now, this atomizer is unique in that the airflow is in the bottom. So when you screw it down, all the airflow is closed off and you crank it down onto your, onto your mod. And then you just boop, you just open the airflow just like that. Couldn't be easier. And then when you want to take it off, you unscrew it just like that. And you're wondering, how can this be? How is that possible with just O-rings? It's not, it's not just O-rings. There's little arms on here that hook onto the bottom, right? So when you're twisting it and twisting it and twisting it, it'll either open or close your airflow. And then your this whole cap will grab the base and screw it down or grab the base and unscrew it because the base, it doesn't pull off. If you have this screwed down to your atomizer, like this, again, I'm gonna screw it down, you can't pull this off. It does not come off because there's little arms underneath. So what you have to do is you unscrew this, just like this, and then you push up, just like this, and your deck magically appears, just like that. You can pull the deck completely out. That's your deck right there. There's the body with the two little arms on the bottom, and here's your deck, and now my fingers are juicy. It's a two-post velocity style deck. It's actually a lot more like the double vision. It's two posts with big oval holes in them. Put a dual fuse Clapton in here. I wicked it like I would an RDA, like the wicks just come out of the coils and go down. They rest on the deck right here. And then in the middle, you have in and up airflow. So you build your coil centered right over these big airflow holes and the air goes in from all these little holes right here and straight up into your mouth. What it does is it creates a really airy, I mean competition level airy draw, but the flavor is just stellar. Now, I've swapped out this O-ring on here to a slightly bigger size because I was having issues with leaking. The O-ring that, that came on here was red, and it was a little bit thinner, I guess, and I would notice that I had like juice puddles on, on my mod. On my mod, I had juice puddles, and I'm like, what? I love this vape so much. Why is it leaking? Why is it leaking? And I discovered, well, I'm going to try to put a little bit bigger of an O-ring on there and see if it leaks. So far, it's been good. So we might need a little bit bigger of an O-ring on their sub-ohm innovations, or if you have this already and yours is leaking, just get a little bit bigger of an O-ring. And so you take your deck, once it's all blah, 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 and wicked, you put it down in there again, you just press it in, go straight down, you can screw this down onto a mod, just like that, the rest of the way, come on. You have to get it, okay, you can't just press it down, you have to press it down into the right position. That is the right position. This is all gonna make much more sense once you see some uppy closey time with this. It's gonna make so much more sense. But I can screw this down, I can just back it off, boop, just like that. Air flows open, let me juice up my coils. Once you're juiced up, you're just ready to vape. I get no more gurgling, I get no more leaking, I get no spit back, I just get fucking delicious vapor into my mouth hole. I love, love this airflow. It is so nice. Now, going over to the Subohm Innovations website, this is the Sub Zero, $65. Stainless steel is in stock. The black is on pre-order, the red is on pre-order, the titanium is on pre-order, Tungsten gray is on pre-order and the silver is on pre-order, but the stainless steel is in stock right now. So, 65 bucks, man. I'm going to spend way more time with this atomizer and really ask myself the question of would I spend 65 freaking dollars on this atomizer? Right now, that answer is a solid maybe. I'm hoping that becomes a yes hoping nothing really goes wrong with this RDA. I hope I don't run into any problems with it. I think I fixed the leaking issue with it. It's just 
a really, really great, really, really great RDA for right now. Right now. This is a first impression. Give me a couple weeks. Give me about a month and I'll come back to this and we'll really dive in and see how good it's held up. And uh, if it's continued leaking at all, if I had to switch out the O-rings, this, that, and the other. But right now, I'm really enjoying this. So yeah, that's going to, uh, that is going to wrap up my first impressions. I did have some stuff from Vape Forward that I wanted to talk about. You know what, we'll talk about that next week. And uh, yeah, I did have a couple other things I wanted to talk about, but I don't want this vlog to run too, too long. Too many first impressions can still be a bad thing. What I want to do now is I'm going to have a sip of beer and we are going to review something that never got reviewed. Reviews for things that never got reviews. So this was a tank from Cloud Chasers Inc. Poor Kurt over there. Now he's given me two things to review now and I didn't review the RDA and I never got around to reviewing this tank because it just completely fell off my radar. And that is completely my fault, Kurt. I apologize to you personally. Thankfully, I know Kurt, I've talked to him a lot. I think he's gonna be okay with this. This is the Trifecta tank from Cloud Chasers Inc. It was their really like their attempt to make a tank that felt and acted like a dripper. Now, the airflow on this tank is the most open, giant, swooshy airflow I have literally ever experienced on a tank. It feels like a dripper. It feels more open than the Twisted Messes RDA. Like, this is like phenotype with three airflow holes open. It is crazy, crazy airflow. It is a cloud chasing tank. The flavor on it is very, eh. this is Cardamator Crush. I've been vaping this juice for years. I know what it's supposed to taste like. It tastes like Cardamator Crush, but the flavor on it is really kind of very meh. It's like, meh. It tastes like, it tastes kind of like the juice you want it to. If you vape simple flavors, if you're like, all I want to do is chase clouds and taste banana, then you could put a banana flavor in here. It would taste like banana, but a lot of the subtleties of some of these more complex juices will get lost in this tank. Cardamator Crush is essentially a strawberry, a pink champagne type of flavor. And the pink champagne flavor is a really sort of subtle uh, after note of the juice. And in this, it just tastes like strawberries. Like that's what I get. I get the basic flavor from this, but the airflow is incredibly open. The clouds that it produces is just ridiculous. This is a uh, 0.2 ohms. I have it set to 124 Watts, which is ridiculous for a tank but it can hold it, it can take it like a freaking champ. I have no problems with wicking, I have no problems with anything. It just produces huge clouds. Cloud Chasers Inc. produced a tank that makes big clouds. That was a dumb sentence and I don't know why I said it. It's just a cloud chasing tank and comes with its own chuff top and the way that you fill it is you negative reverse threaded top cap on here so you go clockwise to unscrew it this chuff is just delrin and so you can mess up the threads which i've messed up the threads i'm not gonna lie i messed up the threads on one and uh i was saddened by that so juice bottle goes in juice goes in there's a little airflow hole over here to let the pressure of the tank out just fill it up you counterclockwise this back on oops counterclockwise this back on all the way down all the way down done tank is ready to go i don't normally rock a 0.2 ohm at 124 watts what is that yeah that's like five volts i feel like this could go way higher than that let's try like 130 watts Ooh, now we're getting into high wattages yeah i mean that's just a touch over five volts and I don't generally rock sub-ohm tanks at that high of a temperature out of fear of burning. I am quite confident in this tank that it's not going to burn. I wish I could take the coil head out of here. This is my last coil head. I wish I could take it out because it's giant. Now this thing drinks juice like you can't imagine. It just tears, 
tears through juice because the juice flow holes are huge. You're putting so much water, water, so much wattage, so much air, and so much liquid through it, it just drinks juice like crazy, but it can produce some huge clouds for you. Ridiculous. It is ridiculous. This tank, Kurt, CCI, you guys are ridiculous because this tank is just straight up ridiculous cloud making machine. It's not my everyday. It's not my go to. I like a nice little balance of flavor and vapor. I do like nice big clouds, but I do flavor is really important to me. This tank just doesn't hit it on the mark with flavor, but it wasn't designed to do that. It was designed to produce giant clouds. It's really easy to fill. It's really easy. It comes all apart and you can clean it. The glass comes off and you can clean it. You can clean every aspect of it, which I do really like in a tank, but if you want something that is ridiculous, that will re produce ridiculous clouds for you, that has a ridiculous airflow, I mean this airflow, it's like almost non-existent. I'm telling you, it's like phenotype with like three, maybe four airflow holes open. It's just the most airflow I've literally ever experienced in a tank. In fact, Kurt, send one of these to Matt from Suck My Mod because I want to get his take on how open this airflow is. Ridiculous, ridiculous. So I'm gonna post a link in the description. Uh, let's see, it's up on Cloudy Collaborations. It's in stock, CCI Triforce sub ohm tank, 44 bucks, 44 bucks. They even have, oh, they carry the VCMT. I've been wanting the VCMT. They have the 30 millimeter VCMT. They also have a 30 millimeter Triforce sub ohm tank. Is the Triforce the same? Triforce. I thought this was the trifecta. I thought they changed the name to the trifecta. Why does it say Triforce on here? I'm confused. Okay, it says Triforce tank. Mine says... Mine says trifecta tank. This is the same tank. I'm looking literally at the same tank right now. Uh, Kurt, little help. Fuck it, I'm calling it the Triforce from now on. CCI Triforce. 44 bucks will get you a Triforce tank. It will do nothing but have huge airflow and completely ridiculous cloud produ pr production. I can rock this 0.22 ohm coil at uh, well over 130 watts. I could go to 145 watts with this, no problem, but this only goes to uh, 133. I'm maxing out the mod right now. Redonkulous. Redonkulous clouds, but that's what I got. Sorry, Kurt, that that uh, never really got its own video. I promise, I promise. I'm making a promise to you right now, Kurt from Cloud Chasers, Inc. The next product that you want me to review, I will review it. It will get its own video, okay? No more of this, uh, oh, I didn't review your atomizer, sorry. Oh, I didn't review your tank, sorry. To be fair, when you gave me that atomizer, you didn't really specify, like, did you want this for a review or not? And then when I asked you, you're like, ah, it's all cool. So I'm not counting that. But this, I I should have done a review, and I didn't. Um, it was, uh, I can't make any excuses. It was right there the whole time, and it kept getting passed up over and over again. And that's completely my fault. I apologize to Kurt. I apologize to Cloud Chasers, Inc. If there's anything I can do to make it up to you, please let me know. I'm willing to do uh, a lot of things um, to, to make up for this apology. So... That's what I got for reviews for things that never got reviewed. Before my battery dies on my camera, let's get to that last segment. <laughs> now, I I've been gone for the last five days, so I haven't had really uh, a good chance to really get into my comments and pick some out that I thought were funny or interesting for my favorite comment of the week. And a lot of people, look, you're trying too hard. I can tell when people are trying too hard when they wanna be in the comment of the week. So don't start leaving just fucking ridiculous comments because I spot them every time. But this guy, Daniel, two days ago, <laughs> I don't know if this was intentional or not. It didn't feel intentional. I feel like he's just an idiot. He wrote, I don't remember what video this was on. I wish I could remember what video this was on, but I cannot. I cannot remember what video this was on. But he wrote, Daniel wrote to me, eloquently said, that is gay gust 
like you, fag boy, go fuck your mom. <laughs> What's great is he didn't write go fuck your mom. He wrote go fuck you, mom. <laughs> That is gay gust like you, fag boy. Go fuck you, mom. That's not even a sentence. Those are barely words, Daniel. Barely words. Anyway, if uh, uh, if anybody uh, ever is watching a video and they see something that's like, well, that could be comment of the week, uh, screen cap it and send it to me. Just screen cap your whole screen and send it to me. And... Uh, I would I'd be interested because I like having multiple comments of the week. Sorry, I only have one this week because I've been gone. But uh, I thought that one I thought that one was pretty freaking interesting. Got a lot of cool stuff coming up. You know what I mean? A lot of regulated mods, box mods, mech mods, tanks, RDAs, beer. Because that's what vaping is, right? Um, I am going to be February at uh, the Vape in the Sun event for. Uh, the vape event uh, organization in uh, near Phoenix, Arizona. Um, be there at the end of February. In March, I'm going to be at both Vapor Slam and VCC Tampa. I just need to book my travel. Still, really excited about those events. And in May, I know I'm going to be back in Vegas for the VPX event in Vegas. Not sure. I don't have a, a whole ton on my plate. I'm trying not to travel as much, but I have a feeling I'm going to end up traveling just as much. But that's what I got. Everybody, thank you so much for joining me again. And as always, ooh, ooh, what am I going to grab? Here you go, Kurt. I'll take you out with the Triforce tank. Let's keep on vaping. Vape Capital.